Good day everyone. My name is Mr. Chisum. Today we'll be looking at the scrotum, the testes and the epididymis. The scrotum, testes, epididymis and the spermatic cord. So this is the scrotum. You can see the scrotum here. So the scrotum is defined as a cutaneous bag that houses the right and the left testes in the lower part of the spermatic cord. So this is the spermatic cord here. And the scrotum is a cutaneous bag which houses the testes in the lower part of the spermatic cord. So the scrotum is divided into two by a median line which is known as the median raft. The median laugh divides the scrotum into the left half and the right half. The left half and the right half. So it is on this median raft that I dissected the, to expose the content. So the left scrotum is slightly lower than the right scrotum because of the length of the spermatic cord. Like I told us, the scrotum helps to cover the testes, and as it covers it, it protects it. It protects it. Then we'll be looking at the layers of the scrotum. The first layer of the scrotum is here. You can see the skin. You can see the skin. The skin is the first layer of the scrotum externally so you can see the skin so the second layer of the scrotum is this muscular layer you can see it this muscular layer here this is known as the datus muscle this is known as the datus muscle so under the influence of a uh, cold the scrotum becomes short and corrugated. It becomes short and corrugated. This is because of the contraction of this datus muscle. But during warmth, you notice that the scrotum becomes elongated and flaccid. This is because of the relaxation of this datus muscle. So this datus muscle, the contraction and the relaxation, plays a major role under the influence of cold or hotness. Then having seen the datus muscle, the third layer of the scrotum is the external spermatic fascia. The third layer is the external spermatic fascia. So this is the external spermatic fascia. This is the external spermatic fascia. This is the datus muscle and this is the external spermatic fascia. Then the fourth layer is this layer here. This layer here is the internal spermatic fascia. This is the internal spermatic fascia. So coming to the blood supply to the scrotum, the scrotum is supplied by the superficial and deep external pudenda artery it is supplied by the scrotal branch of the internal pudenda artery and it is also supplied by the cremastelic branch of the inferior epigastric artery then coming to the nerve supply the anterior one third is innervated by the ilioinguinal nerve and the genital branch of the genitofemoral nerve then the posterior to third is innervated by the posterior scrotal branch of the pudendal nerve. The posterior scrotal branch of the pudendal nerve and also the perineal branch of the posterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh. So this is the innervation of the scrotum. Then coming to the testes. As you can see, this is the testes. And the testis is the male gonad. We have the right testis. 
this is the right testes and the left testes so we'll be looking at the fissures in the testes and like you know the testis is the male gonad it helps in the production of spermatozoa so let's look at the covering of the testis this is the left testis here that we dissected so the first covering of the testis is known as the tunica vaginalis tunica vaginalis and the tunica vaginalis is divided into the outermost part which is the parietal layer and the visceral layer so this is the tunica vaginalis this covering here is the tunica vaginalis so this is it it is the outermost covering of the testes and like i told us it is divided into the parietal layer so this is the parietal layer here this is the parietal layer here and you can see the visceral layer here this layer is the visceral layer so why this is the parietal layer of the tunica virginialis this is the visceral layer of the tunica virginialis and they both cover the testes there is a space between these two layers if you check this tunica virginialis on the medial side you also see a space between the two layers so this is the parietal layer of the tunica virginialis and this is the visceral layer so there is a space between them and the space between them can be filled with fluid to cause hydrocele it can be filled with fluid to cause hydrocele then having seen the outermost covering the testis has two pole two border and two surfaces so this is the superior pole of the testis here here is the superior pole of the testes here is the inferior pole of the testes here is the anterior border of the testes this back here is the posterior border of the testes this is the medial surface of the testes and here is the lateral surface of the testes so i repeat the testis has two pole, two border and two surfaces. The superior pole is here that lies in contact with the epididymis. This is the epididymis. So this is the superior pole of the testis. This is the inferior pole of the testis. Here is the anterior border of the testis. Why here is the posterior border of the testis? Here is the medial surface of the testes and here is the lateral surface of the testes. Then directly on the testes there is another thick fibrous covering. This shiny covering is the tunica albugini. And see this is the tunica albugini. You can see it is thick. It covers the testes internally. So Having seen the covering of the testes, let's look at other fissures of the testes. So this is the epididymis. You can see the epididymis here on the superior pole of the testes. So this is the epididymis. And the epididymis is made up of the head. Here is the head, the body, here is the body, and the tail. So this is the tail. This is the tail that continues upward as the spermatic cord. Then you see this small structure here lying close to the head of the epididymis. This is known as the appendix of the epididymis. This is known as the appendix of the epididymis. Then there is this structure here. This structure here. Hmm? This is known as the appendix of the testes. This is known as the appendix of the testes. Then, having seen that on the posterior lateral surface, on the lateral surface there is a space between the lateral surface of the testes 
and the epididymis. You can see this space here. This space is known as the sinus of the epididymis. It's only on the lateral side. If you notice, it is not on the medial side. So this can also help you to differentiate between the right and the left testes. You always look out for the lateral side, which has the sinus of the epididymis. So this is the inner surface of the testes. This is the inner surface of the testes, filled with seminiferous tubules. So the these seminiferous tubules, the cells in these seminiferous tubules, is responsible for the production of sperm cell, the spermatogenic cells there. The sperm cells that we are formed in the seminiferous tubules inside the testes are stored in the epididymis. So they are stored in the epididymis until ejaculation. The tail of the epididymis loops upward, continues as the ductus deferens. This is the spermatic cord. And I opened up the spermatic cord so that we will see the contents of the spermatic cord. So the first thing in the spermatic cord here is this. This nerve here is known as the ilioinguinal nerve. We have the ductus deferens. This is the ductus deferens here. This is the ductus deferens. So it continues from the tail of the epididymis. It can also be called the vast deferens. So the ilioinguinal nerve here, the ductus deferens here. Then it also contains testicular arteries Premasteric arteries and also the artery to the ductus deferens. It also contains it. You see tiny, tiny arteries within. Then towards here, there is a network of plexus. There is a network of plexus here. It is known as the pampiniform venous plexus. So all these together is enclosed in the spermatic cord. All this together forms the spermatic cord. So the cremaster muscle covers them. I told us that the cremaster muscle help in protecting the content of the spermatic cord. So this is the cremaster muscle and its fascia. So the cremaster muscle and its fascia covers the content of the spermatic cord, which are removing the cremaster muscle, the ilioinguinal nerve. These ones are arteries. These ones are arteries. Then the vas deferens or ductus deferens, the pampiniform venous plexus. So that is it. So, we've come to the end of this teaching. I'll encourage us to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Learn with Chisum Great. Like this video, share this video to your friends, and comment on this video. Thank you very much.